Hey, welcome again to Capra Convos. Got another question for you. Who's reaching out to who? <laughs> we call this last two times trust talks with God. Yeah. So most of the time, we seem like we're reaching out to him hoping that he hears us and that we do all the right things and don't mess up and make sure we repent. But really, God's reaching out to us. Well, you know, um, in John 6, 44, it says this, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I'll raise him up on the last day. And it's written in the prophets. They will be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the father and learns from him comes to me. And I love that because it's, it's showing us in the New Testament, Jesus has given us a kind of an orientation that, hey, we are really just responding to God who's reached out to us first. So yes, our prayer is connecting with God, but really he's drawing us to himself. <laughs> yeah, if I can read that one out of Revelation 3.20. Sure. You know, Jesus proclaims this to the church. You know, he says, I'm standing at the door and knocking. And Revelation 3.20 says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him or have dinner with him and he with me. God is knocking to everybody. And if we'll just say, come on in. He's trying to connect with us more than we want to be connected with us. But the Old Testament brought in so many concepts of all you had to do. You had to grab the horns of the altar and hold on until God moved. You know, Jesus, through his death, burial, and resurrection, got God to move. So you trying to get that to happen is almost saying, well, I'm going to take Jesus's place. Well, Jesus fulfilled the law. That's it. Jesus accomplished. He took the judgment. Of, of the world upon himself. He became sin. And so because of that being fulfilled, we now can come boldly before boldly. the throne of grace. You know, when you think about your relationships, sometimes we neglect a re earthly relationship and something gets standing in the way. There's a block. What steps can you take to reconnect in that relationship? What things are left unsaid sometimes in our relationships? And I think, well, one thing is showing and demonstrating and expressing gratitude. And you know, in the Psalms, it says, uh, enter, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So that's a beautiful way oh, yeah. to reconnect is just acknowledging, God, I'm thanking you for all that you've done for me where we take things for granted. Instead, let's honor and thank God. Well, the song, I, I will enter his courts with praise. You know, we enter praising with thanksgiving. You know, thanksgiving stills the enemy and the avenger. So when I'm in that mode of thanksgiving God, the enemy, he's got no part there. He's, he's running, running for the hills. But most of us get into pleading and oh God, if you please, and trying to make all of our sins, we got them all confessed. And if we have everything repented of, then God will hear us. You know, we've got to move to the new covenant. Jesus got God's attention through his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, those that receive Jesus, I'm in him and he's in me. Man, I get to go, I'm, I'm going right to God because Jesus did. I can enter in boldly. I can come confidently through thanksgiving that God hears me. And I think it's important too, whether it's the Old or the New Testament, we know that when we humble ourselves, that's one of the ways that, that childlike faith and humility, we come before the Lord, acknowledge our need for him. You know, in Jeremiah 10, 23, the Old Testament prophet said, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Well, now the Spirit of God is in us as believers, so it is in us to know the way to go, but we're still drawing upon the Holy Spirit that lives within us. So there is that humbling ourselves, acknowledging our need for Him, and, and you. this helps qualify one of the things you just said. You know, uh, James 5.16 says, Confess to one another, therefore, your, your faults your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest, 
heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. That's out of the Amplified Bible. I love that because it's showing us that we, our prayers make a difference. Our prayers have an impact. Our prayers have a result. They have an answer. You mentioned that one word, heartfelt. See, we've got to connect to God at heart level. Those vain repetitions, as the Bible talked about, don't get you anywhere, man. You could quote them all day until you're blue in the face, man, until the cow comes home. But when you start connecting with God at a heart level, when you start acknowledging his love for you and what Jesus did to bring God right into your court, we start seeing things happen. You know, I'm thinking of times when we've had really tough situations we've had to pray. We don't enter into the pleading mode because Jesus finished it. Jesus is the one that got God's attention. What Jesus did brought God heaven on earth, if you will. So I'm not trying to get God to come to the earth anymore. His spirit now lives in me. Now I commune with God. I have fellowship with God. I, I just enter that place of thanksgiving as courts with praise. And now I have my fellowship and communion. But then there's a time, we talked a little bit about it Monday, about you now getting God's heart, his will. And remember, we pray things, we pray them according to his will, and it's already yes and amen. So if I know something, God's will, healing, deliverance, prosperity, God trying to bring peace to this nation, I can pray that boldly and I speak it out. And understanding I've got faithful words, Denise, like moving the mountain. Come yeah. on, we talked about at a, a Mark 11. We speak to those mountains and we tell them to move. See, so we're not moving in this place where I'm trying to talk God into doing something now. He's given us authority on earth, just like Jesus had. And we're supposed to be speaking these things to be so. And, and remember, the kingdom of God is within Say us. It. Now that we're in the new covenant and we have believed, you know, prayer is really focusing inside. We enter that kingdom realm where... Uh, all things are possible. We leave our baggage out and we seek first his kingdom, his way of doing things. And then all the things we are concerned about are added unto us. And that kind of simplifies it. And I can honestly say in my life from the beginning of getting restored, coming to the Lord, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I began to journal and I would... Um, the Lord would speak to me through the word and I would just hand write those verses out and really they, I memorized them that way. I wasn't really trying to memorize them, but they got written on my heart because I wrote them out. I dated them. This was something God spoke to me. And so that is a way to develop a discipline that's going to help you and enable you. You know, you, you create a structure, you might set some goals and you're not enslaved to those, but you're establishing a lifestyle. And that's what we've been talking about. These trust talks with God. We're establishing a lifestyle of being thankful and praising him and thanking him before we see something come to pass. We're establishing a lifestyle of, you know, praying the scriptures out. And Still remember, is. his will is his word. Mm -hmm. So you can take hold and believe and put your faith in God's promises because uh, that's how you're you're thinking deeply in his presence, and you're going to uh, begin to draw upon what God has promised through the kingdom that's within. So with that said, that the kingdom of God is within, and we are called to do what Jesus did on the earth, we've got to start doing that. Go ahead and tell Psalms 112. I, I want to read this passage because I love this out of the Psalms. It's in 112. And it says, surely he will, ne he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting Good. remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in you the Lord. You mean God's not freaking out right now with all this going on? No. And it's talking about us. He, his heart is established. He won't be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. So right now we've got a lot of enemies in the kingdom of darkness that are trying to threaten and intimidate with all these circumstances. But they're already under his feet. And we've got authority. We've got to stand fast, stand firm, stand trusting in God's promises and agree with God. Say what God says and speak out his word against the powers of darkness that are already defeated in Christ. <laughs> we just enforce it. So we're going to do that right now. We're enforcers. 
we're, we're not trying to get God to do anything. Jesus has already done it and finished it. Now, our job is not even to complete it. Our job is to enforce what's already been done. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over this violence. We take authority over these things that are trying to tear up this nation. And we bring peace. We speak peace. We thank you for believers all over this nation speaking the word out over their cities. Our cities are blessed. Our cities are prosperous. Our cities are violence-free in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, today that the people out there with their bodies not feeling good, we speak health and wholeness to them, healing to your bodies in Jesus' name. And we pray full exposure thank you, Father. to these enemies' the works in secret and in darkness to be evident for exactly what they are. And that, Father, we pray for the people that are... Uh, in, in a neutral place that are not aware. God, thank I you. thank you that the lights are coming on, that people begin to see know the truth. and have spiritual discernment and that the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit would reveal yes. where we're at in time and that your coming is near and that uh, God, that all of this stuff is, we put an end to that thank in you. the name of Jesus. We push back in Jesus' name. Amen. So you continue to take authority. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. You can go to capramen.com. Be a part of partnering with us, helping us get this message around the world. God bless you.